door top attached to our door bottom. Now what we have to do is we have to put a flange on our door so we can flange it to the inner frame. Now we want to have some kind of a consistent gap around our door. There's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, we're going to do it utilizing the inner door structure. Okay, now we've made our long walk across the shop back over to the car. We're going to use our inner door frame to make our template for our bend line on our um, hem for the uh, door. Um, so I got a piece of sheet metal in my hand here. It's the same thickness as what our door skin is, 18 gauge. And we're going to use it to check to be sure that, because if when the door skin lays on top and it has to wrap around, we're just kind of checking to be sure our door frame is nice going to the cowl. Just checking different areas, see it's tucking in nice behind behind the A pillar like it's supposed to here in the back. Um, here on the side looks nice, you know. It's pretty nice. But down low here it's 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 high. So this flange here needs 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 worked a little bit. We're gonna move that flange in just a little bit. The bottom looks pretty good. Um, it needs to, I can see it's sticking out just a little bit here in the front. So we're gonna um, move that. And also, we want like a 3 16th, a 3 16th inch gap all the way around the car. A 3 16th inch gap around the door on a bare metal car sometimes seems to look big. But uh, with a 3 16th gap, by the time you do any body work, primer and paint, you got paint build up on the door jam, paint build up on the edge of the door. So that 3 16 is actually going to close up to a fat eighth inch. When you're gapping your doors in bare metal, you don't want to gap them at like an eighth of an inch. Because by the time you get any body work, primer and paint on there, you filled up your, your, um, your gap, your door gap. And if it's any flex at all, if that ever touches, if these surfaces ever touch between the door and the cowl, the door and the quarter panel or anywhere, boom, you're going to pop your paint. So I always start with a 3 16 gap on my door on bare metal all the way around. And you want to get all your pre-fitting and stuff um, finished before you put the skin on because you get the skin on and if you wrap it around the door frame, if the door frame isn't really close or if it's a long way off it's just going to mimic whatever the door frame is then you're going to have nothing but problems i got a couple of hammers that are my favorites this martin and then that little ball peen they work great for all kinds of cool shit this flange here it's on this piece of piece of metal for just a demonstration for a flange that's a half inch tall flange but if I needed it to be taller or shorter, I can change it with just my hammer and dolly. If I wanted it shorter, I'd tip my, my dolly in here away from the away, away from the corner. Instead of it being tight in the corner, I'd tip it away. And I'd hold it there, and then I'd hit it right here and start moving that down. And it actually would shorten it. If I needed it longer, I'd tip it like this and hit it that way and start getting it to go that way. So you can change the height of this flange just by tipping a dolly, hitting it here, or hitting it here, and, and bringing it over each, either way. There's ways to do flanges by hand using pliers, hammer and dolly, and tune everything up with a hammer and dolly. You know, we use a lot of equipment in the shop, but all that equipment was I didn't start off with that equipment. I started off with this. I've had this hammer longer than any hammer I've ever had. This little ball peen. Um, and I used, started using it when I first was starting to TIG weld and do sheet metal, uh, weld sheet metal. My heat affected zone, I, I didn't have very good control with, a body, with my body hammer. I'd leave little marks and stuff in it and I'd overstretch it and everything. But I found that using this little, this little ball peen, it hit just in the area where I'd been welding. And so until I really got comfortable and could feel what I was um, doing just from experience, 
this was the number one hammer I used for doing for planishing wells after I'd welded something together um, it's just a little plum just a little plum uh, hammer I've probably had it close to 40 years then I switched to this Martin um, and I like it because of the weight it's a heavy hammer and you can hit if you're having trouble with your dolly hammering and dollying and, and you're getting it to rock and you're getting divots and, and stuff go with your index finger because once you lock it in with your index finger the hammer is going to go exactly where you want it to go okay I'm just going to move this flange down I've got a I've got a line here uh, which shows the edge and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hit below it and I'm going to push this edge down just a little bit so I'm going to rock my dolly up a little bit You can see I'm already moving this, this, it's already coming down just a little bit. Start squaring that up, so I'm going to jam this up in the corner. Okay, now that we've got our flange uh, re rearranged here and here, um, we'll put it back on the car and double check it and be sure it's cool. Also, you notice I put some red dicom on here. So if you'll notice, I put some dicom around the outside of the uh, flange here. We're going to we're going to scribe and mark it off of the body, um, so it gives us a, a, the door gap that we need. I'm going to tune up the flange a little bit using these pliers, Nipex pliers you can usually get them from Mac or snap-on or I think I've even seen them at Sears they're a German made and they got a lot of uh, compound leverage so you can really grab an area and fold it under and get it tweaked over like it needs to be because we're gonna open this gap up around this frame to the jam to a quarter of an inch um, I was talking about wanting to get that 3 16 inch gap so Say this is the start of a flange for the door skin. Pretend this is the door skin. Here's our flange. If we just flanged it over what we have right here right now, obviously we'd be way too tight. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark all of this back a quarter of an inch um, and open it up to a quarter of an inch all the way around, and then that'll give us our gap that we need for our um, for our door. And we'll transfer that to our door skin regardless of how hard we try to hit it perfect it's not going to be perfect and the very 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 last thing that i ever do on a car is gap the doors so we got a good fit there you can see how it lines up here so there here's nice we we'll line up pretty good right here good right there nice down at the bottom that's where we get all our moving right there We'll scribe it, get a quarter of an inch all the way around it, and uh, we'll be set. Okay, so we got we got all of our door gaps on our jam, quarter of an inch, all the way around. Look, looks big, but let's check our let's take our piece of test panel here. So if this is our door skin and it's wrapped around it, the way it's going to be, and it shuts. Oh, look at that, three sixteenths gap. So that's what we're going to have whenever we do our door skin. We're going to have that kind of a gap all the way around. Check it in the front.
kind of got a high spot in it. It's going to be nice. So, now we can put our door skin on here, transfer that onto it as a scribe line, and we'll figure out where we're going. 